Oh, why we need to use a Spring Framework in Java? Uh, why can't we uh, go without a Spring Framework? Mm, can you can you repeat your question, Adish? Why we should use a Spring Framework in Java? Spring Framework, uh, because uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, when we talk about the Spring Boot, so basically, it's it it develops on the basis of the rapid uh, rapid application development. Uh, this is uh, rapid, yeah, rapid application development. So basically, it says you know you know you need not to write uh, you know most of the uh, you know boilerplate scores and all those you know uh, it, it also it is a light based and all the dependency comes on the you know uh, whether it's a grade or the maven. So you do not have to you know write all those. Uh, you just you just need to you know. Uh, uh looks out for the for the main business logic which you wanted to implement and actually it reduces the code also by using the different use of the annotations and all, all those things okay yeah and so also what yeah. Is an, yeah what is abstraction in java abstraction is basically uh you know uh is basically uh uh hiding the uh, you know uh, the implementation and uh, showing all only the only uh, those those things so for, for example abstraction can be achieved with so interfaces or the abstract class so basically what what these are like uh, you uh, uh, you know uh, we define the structures then you have to define like you can you you can have your own implementation of it so in in the sense of abstraction basically uh, 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 it it defines out you know uh, uh, it defines out uh, the, it it hides out the implementation as well as showing only the only the essential you know uh, uh, only the essential part of uh, of the segment. Okay, have you used uh, abstraction in your uh, code code base? Yeah. By using the okay. interfaces. Can you give an uh, example? Yeah. Can you give an example where uh, you have used? So, uh, for example. <clears throat> uh you know uh, interfaces uh, suppose uh, actually we have this requirement of defining uh, you know uh, a commit function uh, within within the context suppose uh, suppose uh, we have to you know database instances of a particular uh, you you are able to hear me right yes 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 okay okay so suppose uh, suppose uh, you know there's there, there is this uh, uh uh, there is this requirement. Suppose, for example, you have two database instances, and uh, every every database instances, you know, it, it's a basically a flow. For example, once once the data comes in, and uh, you know, uh, you uh, you do all those steps like uh, you know, uh, opening out the connections, and uh, committing the transactions, and uh, you know, uh, uh, and closing out the transactions, and then. Once the once the closing of the transactions happen, then you move out to the different different instances of the data, data uh, of the data instances. So, for example, in that in that particular you know design pet in that in that particular design, you can use the interfaces to define out you know what are the mandatory steps that you need to follow. Then you can move move forward, uh, you know uh, move forward to the different database instance. For example, once you define out the interfaces like okay now these are the steps you need to follow you can implement that particular you know interfaces and the best part is like uh, for the particular class you can implement a you can implement Hello. more than one uh, interfaces so this way uh, in in that in that uh, in that in that point like it is very much useful also and also uh, if suppose uh, uh, like this is this is one of the requirement and uh, second one is like uh, mm, Second so one. how are you interacting with the databases? Uh, plain JDBC or for uh, the Spring Boot? If you are using Spring Boot, so how are you interacting with the DB? Uh, JDBC template you are using. Okay. Okay. What is IOC uh, pattern? What is IOC pattern? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's basically as uh, acronym is goes like inversion of control. So basically, uh, when we talked about the inversion of control, so it basically talks about you know uh, it uh, defines out uh, uh, the the structure of uh, creating out the object by 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 using uh, the inversion of it. Basically, 
suppose you if you wanted to create an object uh, you know in a, in a plain old java you can say like with the u with the new keyword so what it does like you don't have to define like that you just do one thing you just define out the beans what you are going to use in that application and spring cont spring container will take care of will take care of it once you define out all this all those classes all the beans classes with the use of add that component it will it will take out it will it will it will design out all those uh, you know uh, uh, it will design out all those uh, uh, design by using the uh, auto wire annotation so uh, in a in a plain in a, in a in a plain sense we can say like right, uh, it actually inverses out the inverses out the control which is which is given to a particular class uh, to to a particular set of you know configuration files okay so what is an exception and uh, how are you going to handle these exceptions in spring boot or is it normal no plain job so okay so uh, exception is basically one of those one of those abnormal situation uh, where you the uh, where the execution of the code stops so uh, for example there is this unchecked and a checked exception and uh, we can there are couple of way like uh, if uh, you can you can handle it through the try and try and catch block and to find basically try catch and finally block or either way you can uh, source out that particular exception within a class within the sorry sorry about it within the signature of the class and uh, when i told about the checked and unchecked exception so checked exception is basically one of those exception which comes at the compile time and uh, runtime exception is one of those exception which come as a runtime so basically for the compile time you know that okay these are the these are the exception which you know that it it might come in some scenario for example you know uh, you are looking out for the file and you say okay if, suppose if those if those file is not you know found then where what can what can be the next step to be logic to logic out the program so you can say okay let's catch out this particular thing uh, like file not found exception but uh, there are some scenarios where you do not have the control of it so for example a uh, null pointer exception suppose if to if one of the uh, you know object is uh, you know pointing if one of the you know uh, object is pointing to a part, one of the memory location and that memory location is being used by another another you know segment of it so you say okay uh, but we internally with we within the code cannot see that so for that uh, uh, we for the null point exception in the java it actually they are come up with a optional class so by using the optional class you can take it out because it gives out the false true and false value uh, with, by using one of those one of the functions in the optional class so you get to know like you can define your own you know logical segment like okay now if the if the value is not found what to do and if the value is found what to do okay uh, ganesh karyan yeah no right. You know of Java eight features, right? Yeah, yeah. What is? Ah, so okay. So yeah, in the Java eight features, like uh, first of the major features, they are coming with the Steam APIs. Uh, and it's basically you know, uh, uh, basically in the execution of uh, of the of the stream of data, uh, it has also been used for the pipeline operations, and. Uh, apart from that uh, they have come up with the uh, implementation of the interfaces with a different tweaks so like initially uh, before java 8 all the interfaces constrained the abstract method uh, now uh, the interfaces can have static as well as default method as well as they have come up with uh, local date a local date apis so you do not have to you know look out for the locale class which which initially you, we are doing so um, you know local date api will looks out for uh, like the time zone it it internally uses the time zone and give out the time zone if you request it to and uh, and they are also come up with the functional interfaces and also lambda expressions and uh, they are also implementing a new uh, memory segment uh, just ask what is fun so i don't want all java features I don't want all Java eight features. Okay. I just want to know what is functional interface. What is? Functional. Yeah, functional okay. interfaces is uh, actually these are declared as at that functional interfaces, and uh, these are the interfaces which uh, which consist of only one abstract class. 
sorry one abstract method and can have static and uh, default and, and numbers of static and default methods so for example before before uh, you know uh, before java 8 also there are some uh, functional interfaces which are present like comparable and all those things okay fine what's the difference between map and flat map uh in in actually map actually uh, uses actually these both are the intermediate operation for the for, for the streamline of the flow so uh, actually map uh, uh, it uh, it it actually form it, uh, it formulate out the operations which is performed to give us the output as a stream and uh, for example uh, uh, suppose hello hello ganesh hello ganesh hello ganesh hello yeah yeah now now visible no yeah sorry about it actually uh, electricity went off actually just on a click yeah. now it's come yeah. oh. sorry sorry about it sorry about it so oh, yeah. Uh, yeah where was i um, what is the question yeah map and flat map right map. sorry sorry yeah so uh, map actually uh, only uh, you know uh, it actually only uh, uh, trans it, it actually transform uh the stream which is given initially uh so it transform into a new form but with the flat map actually it transform as well as you know, flattening out out this data for example suppose uh like in the in the when in, in the context of the matrix if i if i try to you know explain you so suppose uh i am using a map so it basically have those values so it maps out or uh, you know uh, suppose there's a 2d so it maps out on the 2d but when when i use the flat map so if the data is in 2d it actually flatten out the data in the 1d i think that what i understand from the flat map i have not used the no okay okay no issue you know yeah. streams right yeah yeah a bit actually uh, for my previous project i have worked for like 3 and 4 month not majorly used stream but yeah i uh, i i will try yeah you know when to use stream and parallel stream when to use stream and parallel stream um i i know stream means suppose if if there is a you know a flow of data coming out from suppose uh, uh, what we have done uh, in the previous project so actually uh, the branches uses uh, you know they upload one of the files on the front end so it comes to out and we actually you know list out all those data in a list and actually process out the data which is coming out so uh uh it basically you know uh, actually we designed the flow like that whatever the data is coming out in it is actually in the flow so that's why that's why we are using the stream so that's what actually the initial documentation of the stream api is doing but when uh when i have talked about the parallel streams i have not used it but uh, maybe uh, okay. maybe the parallel streams um, yeah i have not used it actually Okay, okay, no issue. Yeah, yeah Narish, do you have anything to ask? No. Uh, yeah, Kash, we have done from our end. Uh, we'll get back to you. Yeah, sure, sure. Thanks, thanks, yeah, Narish. Thanks, Narish. Thank, yes, thank you, Kash. Thanks, thanks. Nice talking to you. Yeah.